Welcome students to my first video tutorial in qualitative research. So that is practical research one. In this video, I will show you the four qualitative research designs. That actually there are a lot of designs in quality, but we'll focus in this four. So are you ready? To start with the objective, to identify the different qualitative research design. So that is our objective. Okay, so what is qualitative research design? It is the framework of research methods and techniques chosen by a researcher. The design allows researchers to hone in on research methods that are suitable for the subject matter and set up their studies for success. So when we say research design, these are your strategies and techniques as a researcher. How are you going to how you're going rather to analyze and uh, interpret the data so that is research design so the different qualitative research designs so let's start with the case study a case study studies a person program or events in a defined time frame so it is often presented in this format the problem the context the issues and the lesson learned so of course there is a problem exists that's why you are um, you are searching for um, the solution to that problem and the context that is the place where the problem occurs and the issues regarding the problem and the lesson learned of the subject of your study so a person or program or event would be studied over a particular period of time means that case studies allow for holistic and in-depth investigations. So when we say holistic, that is um, authentic and you need to um, spend a lot of time. And um, of course, if there is a case, so you need to go under investigation regarding your a topic. So the subjects of investigations may be an individual or a group of persons. So you may choose um, a respondents. It could be one or a group of persons. So sorry for that noise. And how are you going to uh, collect the data? The data may be collected using a variety of means, including the rec or participant observation. So when we say participant observation, that is as a researcher, you're going to mingle or go with your um a person that you are being studied so it could also be in a form of interviews analysis of records so interview so you have to um produce or make questions and ask to your respondents or to the person so analysis of records documents physical artifacts or audiovisual materials so for example drug rehabilitated teenagers so if you um, want uh, the case of teenagers who are rehabilitated um, because of drugs so you need to, uh, to collect data through observation or interviews or participant observation or analysis of records documents physical artifacts or audiovisual materials also uh, same with the transgenders, gay cohabitation success stories, specifically their failures and their success. Okay, so that is case study. Next, ethnography. Literally, ethnography means to write about a group of people. So, uh, just remember that ethnography, ethnography rather, um, it talks about uh, you're going to study the group of people and you're going to look for their culture so you have to uh, study their culture so how are you going to collect the data participant observation is the main component of any ethnographic study as it allows the researcher to observe individual and group behavior in their natural context living with them for an extent extended sorry of time so you need to a lot of course spend a lot of time in this design because you're going to go with them 
and study their behavior and living, how they eat, how they, uh, how they plant, how they speak, so how they sleep, so everything regarding their uh, culture or their living. So that is ethnography, a group of people. Say for example, you're going to study the group of people of the Pugaos or the Itas or the Mangyans. Okay, so another example. We can join a group of teachers with thousands of members on Facebook and analyze their online interactions, map their concerns, and describe the overall culture they have created within that virtual space. Of course, this can also be done in other social media platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So if you want to uh, study a group of teachers in a Facebook, so you have to join with them to know and to uh, discover, analyze their interactions, their concerns, and their culture in that specific uh, Facebook group. Okay? You could also have in, in Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So, so for example, you're going to study the other artists in, or the actresses and actors in Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So what they do, uh, what did they post? How do you, how do they socialize with others? Uh, such thing. Okay, so that is ethnography. Next, phenomenology design. It emerged from the works of philosophers like Edmund Martin and others. So the focus of phenomenology is the structures of present conscious experience. So meaning to say, as a re as a phenomenologist, you are after with their experience. Not your experience, not your observation, but your respondent's experience. So when we say conscious experience, we mean two things. First, we live through the experience. Second, we perform the experience. So it is different from merely observing or watching something because if you are just going to observe and watch something regarding your study or your uh, the person you are being studied. So that is a case study, not a phenomenology. So you are after with their experience. You are exploring or um, um, getting their uh, um, experience. Say for example, um, um, you're going to know the experience of the survivor, survivor rather, in Yolanda. So in Yolanda, um, what do you call that? Typhoon. So, so you're going to get their experience or you're going to uh, conduct a study to know what happened that day. So another example having a boyfriend or girlfriend while we might gain understanding about the dynamics of such relationships by observing our classmates we cannot say that we have consciously experienced being in that relationship ourselves yes so well until we do of course so you cannot say or you cannot ask uh, as a, a researcher you cannot uh, merely say that having a boyfriend and girlfriend are are happy because you you are not you are not uh, I mean you're not the person you are not in the proper position to say that thing right so as a researcher you need to um, you need to know really the experience of having a boyfriend and girlfriend right so that is phenomenology thus Phenomenologies are after with a pure and an unadulterated rather description, explanation and understanding of an experience from the mouth from the mouth of what? Of the subject, of the person you are being studied, of those who actually experience a particular phenomenon. So sino ba ang naka experience? So you're after with their language, not your words. Thus, we come to realize the importance of the language used by the, uh, by the experiencing subject, person, or agent to represent his or her experience. Last one is the grounded theory. So when we say grounded theory, it attempts to extract a general abstract theory of process or interaction grounded in the views of research participants. So in grounded theory, if you choose this uh, design, um, there's no existing theory in the books or in, in rather in other sources. So you have to construct your own 
theory or hypothesis based on the uh, based on the analysis and interpretation of the data based on the collection of the data so that is grounded theory so this process uses multiple stages of data collection and the refinement and interrelationship of categories of information so the researcher chooses different groups of respondents so you could uh, have uh, say for instance uh, four to five different respondents and constantly compares categories you have to compare the responses once you collected the data emerging from them in order to map similarities and differences of information so that as a researcher you will know uh, each differences each responses uh, and its differences and similarities so that is grounded theory so grounded means from the bottom so from the bottom so you have uh, you based on the collected data you will form a theory or a hypothesis okay so let's have the example an in-depth study on the movement of a particular fish market like the one in Balak Bakan can be done using the grounded theory design in this way the researchers would be able to know the processes in a particular fish market where the fish comes from so that is the process where the fish com comes from where it is sold and how where it is transported to and how etc so later on this data may be compared and contrasted with other locals or locals or meaning in other market or in other places which is markets thereby generating a generalizable theory about fish markets so from those processes regarding fish market you could uh, conduct a different or you could um, compare and contrast their responses how they sold how they transported how they uh, get the fish where where the fish comes from okay so that is grounded theory all right so on my next video i will discuss the three um um, designs in qualitative so wait for that and thank you for listening and I will be showing you another video regarding grounded theory how are how you're going to uh, to step by step get the data in grounded theory and how to come up with this theory okay so thank you for listening thank you and goodbye